Eric Fled again, uh, here with another video for you. Um, what I've decided, uh, seeing that we're on this part of my training right now for my fire pilot license, is um, going over pre-solo uh, requirements. Uh, there is a written exam that you need to take in order to get prepared for your solo, and it's called the pre-solo written exam. Um, Flight schools will have different versions of the pre-solo exam. Uh, obviously, they have to conform to the FAA um, rules and requirements, but um, I'm going to look this over with you, and then honestly, we're going to make a series of videos because it's, it's a long uh, pre-solo written exam, uh, in which case I've already done about half of it going over it with my instructor. Uh, the good news about the pre-solo written is that it's basically an open book exam, okay? So it's not like the, the written private pilot exam where you have to just know it and, and basically go through it multiple choice style. It's uh, an exam in which you research all the answers and then at least for me, my, my instructor has been going over it question by question with me to make sure I understand I'm taking notes like a fiend basically. And uh, we do this in between the actual flight lessons. So if there's a bad weather day, uh, tomorrow, for example, is supposed to be uh, my lesson, and uh, it looks like it's going to be very overcast tomorrow, so I am looking forward to going to the airport to go over the pre-solo even more. Um, we've gone through a lot of it, though. So, what the goal is, is that we break these videos up into pieces. Uh, we go over a couple questions in each video, and then eventually, once I have gone over the pre-solo with my instructor and, and have done everything in great detail with all my notes and everything, then we'll combine all the mini videos into one big long video that uh, prospective pilots, private pilots uh, can review with. Um, yeah, so let's get on with this and uh, see where it takes us. So I quickly found this pre-solo written exam, okay? Um, this is from another flight school or something. Uh, this looks a lot more official than mine. Not that mine's bad. It has uh, my, my copy from my flight school has a lot of good questions on it that cover everything the FAA wants you to know. But the reason why I wanted to show you this was it has an introduction and it says the actual rule. Uh, FAR 61.87 specifies that prior to conducting solo flight, a student pilot must demonstrate satisfactory aeronautical knowledge on a knowledge test that is administrated and reviewed by the student's authorized instructor and meets the requirements of the section. The test must address the student pilot's knowledge of applicable sections of uh, FAR Part 61 and 91, airspace rules and procedures for the airport where the solo flight will be formed, and flight characteristics and operational limitations for the make and model of aircraft to be flown. Student pilots should understand that the pre-solo written exam is a separate exam and is different from and in addition to the FAA recreational or private pilot knowledge test. So this is basically the test that you take in order to prepare yourself to solo, which is also, uh, you need so many hours of soloing for your private pilot license. And this is just to make sure that you know everything you need to know before you are allowed to solo, okay? Uh, notice that down here, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but it says, the written exam will be an anticipation of solo flight. It's an open book exam, okay? That's why he just basically sent me home with the copy of the pre-solo exam, which is not this one that you're seeing. Uh, I will be referring to mine, though, after we get done with this. Uh, it is not a pass-fail exam. You basically just get the questions and you research them in the materials that you use. So why don't I just show you the materials I use to get all these answers? So as I said in previous videos, uh, you're gonna need to get some type of uh, private pilot course textbook, basically. Um, the one that was recommended to me, and I'm lucky because I am a uh, educator by day, and the gentleman I take lessons with was a former educator from my school. That's how I, I actually knew him personally before I took flight lessons with him. But he taught an aeronautics class at my high school that I teach at, and they still had the Jeppesen book, which would run you, I don't even know. I was allowed to borrow this basically from the science department, and they probably honestly don't even want it back, because I guess the plan is now, if I get my private pilot's license, I go to them and they see if they want to do an aeronautics course again, because they did ask my instructor to come back. And uh, he's, he's happily retired. He likes just doing uh, lessons, and uh, doing what he wants to do. So, 
he will not be returning. However, Jefferson costs money. And what you need to know is that you can also get this information from the free FAA uh, handbook online, which I will, I guess, post a uh, link to it in, my, in the description. It's basically the same manual. It's a little bit more dry, but it has the same material in it. And it's written by the FAA and it covers everything. Uh, Jepson, honestly, I really like this one a lot better. Uh, it does, I mean, it has a lot of pretty pictures. That's for one, uh, the FAA guy does too. But this is more like a, a standard textbook. And honestly, it's not the driest thing to read. The FAA book, the handbook to me, seems like it's very dry, all right? But all the answers to your pre-solo, if they're not here, you're gonna get them from ground school, which again, I recommend you do before you even get flight lessons, just get an idea of what you need to know. So the next thing that I use to study, uh, the ground school notes from the ground school that I attended at the flight school that I'm currently taking lessons from. And I did this all before I started my private pilot lessons. Uh, this goes over air spaces, airport marking, stuff like that. Stuff that you might already know if you've been flight simming for a while, by the way. So some of these pre-solo uh, questions might cover material that you already know just from doing flight simming, which is why I recommend also practicing on the flight sim if you are going for a license because it will save time and it also help you study and review things while you have some fun. So this right here, my friends, is the pre-solo exam that I got from my flight instructor at my flight school. It is one, two, three, four, five pages long with questions. And like I said, we'll take a couple questions uh, each video and eventually we'll just put it into one big video. Um, just gonna make sure that I get all my notes straight from my instructor, which you can see. One, I, I basically filled this pre-solo exam out. I did it through researching the books that I needed. And then basically, in between flight lessons, if there's bad weather or not, we go over this thing because you need to, you know, do this for the FAA and also just to know what you're doing. But I have taken tons of notes. He's basically going over every question in depth so far. We're not through the whole thing yet, but you can see all the notes that I'm taking. Uh, some of the stuff I know, some of the stuff I did not know. Uh, some of the stuff was a review, but stuff that needs to still go over, okay? Um, so yeah, if you're gonna do this, you definitely wanna take notes on this. And uh, we'll review each question in depth, just like you did with me, to give you an idea of what you need to know for your pre-solo written, non-pass-fail test, just uh, open book, need to know knowledge. All right, so we're just gonna start right off the bat. First off, we're gonna say, uh, we're gonna remind everyone out there that I am flying the Cessna 152. So all these questions will be answered uh, as required in relation to a Cessna 152. And the model I fly, I believe is a 1978 Cessna 152. Um, this information, by the way, right here, that I'm about to go over, can be found in the pilot's operating handbook because the first question says, so question number one on my pre-solo exam, and again, everything's in relation to the Cessna 152, but today's question for a pre-solo exam is, for all the following V-speeds, enter the speed for your airplane and what the V-speed means. And then it gives an example, which does not relate to the Cessna 152, it's just a, a standard example, VR, uh, equal to 50 knots indicated airspeed. VR is the rotation speed. So you need to know what speed uh, the V speed is and you need to know what it is used for, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go through all the V speeds and I did this in another video just to show you what uh, V speeds are. I will leave a link in the description, but we're gonna go right down the list of V speeds that were asked on my pre-solo exam so far. Okay, the first one is VR. VR is the rotation speed, and it's a speed at which to rotate. In other words, the one to start pulling back on the yoke to get the plane up in the air. Okay, the next V speed that you are required to know in the pre solo exam is VX. And VX is the best angle of climb speed. You get the most altitude in the shortest distance. And for the Cessna 152, that's 54 knots. You would use this to clear obstacles or if you're on a short uh, runway, short field takeoff, um, 
you would need to climb out at 54 knots to get the plane up uh, in altitude. It's basically clear stuff. The next one is VY, and that's the best rate of climb. Uh, this is used for standard takeoffs. Um, it gives you the most feet per minute, so it gets you up in the air, uh, hopefully into more safe territory in case there's ever a problem with the plane. And uh, again, most altitude over time. In the Cessna 152, you want to take off and hold uh, 67 knots while climbing, and that will give you the best rate of climb. All right, the next uh, V speed they ask you for is VFE, which is the maximum flaps extension speed. Okay, it's the type. That's the top of the white arc. Uh, again, I had a video on on uh, V speeds. Please check the link in the description because. It will go over the white arc and what it is and what it looks like on the airspeed. But it's basically the type of the white arc. It's the max speed at which to extend uh, flaps or have them extended, okay? Uh, I was told that some planes have incremented speed for different angles of flap. In other words, if you're flying like the Cessna 172, there's a lot more settings than just 10, 20, 30 like on the Cessna 152, but each setting might only be able to be used at different speeds, whereas the Cessna 152, generally, anything below 85 knots is okay. The next V speed you need to know if you're pre-solo is VA. VA stands for maneuvering speed, okay? And that can be in the Cessna 152 anywhere from 93 to 104 knots. And it depends on the gross weight of the plane. Things to know. Uh, it's basically the speed at which full and abrupt maneuvers can overstress the airplane. Um, basically, if you go over the maneuvering speed you, and it's turbulent and you do abrupt uh, movements of the plane, you can overstress it and that would not be a good thing. So the general maneuvering speed is 93 to 104 knots, depending on the weight of the plane. And that gives you, you know, maneuverability in the plane. That means that you can actually uh, move it easily to the left, to the right, in different ways, okay? Uh, the lower gross rate of the plane equals lower maneuvering speed. So if the gross weight of the plane is lower, then you have to, you can go lower in maneuvering speed. And if you have a higher gross rate uh, in the plane, you have a higher maneuvering speed. So that's how it works, maneuvering speed in the Cessna 152. All right, we are on the last five for ten, uh, today's video on the pre solo exam, which is question number one. Uh, we have VBG, which is the best glide speed, okay? The best glide speed is the best speed at which the plane can glide. And this is very important because if you ever have an engine uh, cutout, something like that, you want to eventually set this plane for the best glide so you have the most time to look for some place to land. The best glide speed in the Cessna 152 is 60 knots. 60 knots. Uh, but it can change with headwind and tailwinds. So in other words, if your plane's heading into the wind and you're going 60 knots, you might have to go a little faster to keep it to keep it up there. There's also a parasitic drag if you have landing gear, uh, something from the plane. It means that a higher airspeed is needed to achieve the best glide. So anything that, that causes drag on the plane um, means higher airspeeds needed other than 60. And the weight is handled the same way as parasitic dra uh, drag. So with more weight, your best glide might change and you might have to go a little faster. Okay, the next V speed we have on our pre solo test is VNO, which stands for Maximum Structural Cruise Speed. On the Cessna 152, it is 111 knots, and it's the top of the green arc on the airspeed indicator. It is the maximum speed to fly at to maintain structural integrity uh, if you have turbulence or strong winds. Uh, generally, you want to fly underneath this speed just for general flying. Could you go a little bit more than that? Sure, you can go into the yellow. The yellow is, is the uh, next. Uh, it's higher than the, than the green arc, basically, on the airspeed. And that is only, though, for flight in which there is no adverse conditions, no turbulence, no heavy winds, gusts. Uh, so you can go above VNO, but that's the maximum structural cruise speed. So if you have, like, uh, turbulence and stuff, your, your plane won't crack up. So it's pretty good to try to stay uh, underneath that. 
However, we also have VNE, which is your next V speed. And VNE is the never exceed speed. Uh, important things to know about this, your windshield in the plane will probably fail first if you get to this speed. Uh, the windshield will probably uh, be blown out. So that would be an indicator that you are going way too fast. Okay, never exceed, by the way, is the red line at the top of the arc, I believe. It's the speed you never want to exceed. You're definitely going to cause damage to the plane if you fly that fast or even faster. And on the Cessna 152, that's 149 knots. The next V speed you need to know about is VS. VS stands for the stall speed with the flaps up. It's the bottom of the green arc, and it means that that's the stall speed when you have no flaps. Uh, on the Cessna 152, that's 40 knots. So if you get to around 40 knots, you might start hearing the um, stall warning horn, which you can't miss, um, and you might be stalling. You might have to push the plane uh, nose up a little bit more, but it will eventually stall somewhere around that speed of 40 knots. And then finally, the last V-Speed for today's video is VSO. This is all the first question my with a pre-solo, but VSO stands for the stall speed with the flaps down. Often this is the speed that you need to look out for when you're landing because you often have flaps extended. And the VSO on the Cessna 152 is 35 knots, okay? So when you're landing, if you are uh, got full flaps extended because you're landing on the runway and you are down in 35 knots, you have to be careful because you might be stalling the airplane at any second. And again, you'll hopefully be hearing the stall warning horn. Hopefully that'll be going on around 35 knots when you're above the runway. Now, that being said, will you hear the stalling, stall warning horn when you are flaring the plane for your final this, uh, final landing? You're, flaring, you're over the runway, you're about 10 to 15 feet off the ground and you're flaring the nose up to make it descend a little bit further. Will you hear the stall, uh, stall warning horn? Yes, you will sometimes. Uh, that's normal, from what I've been told at least. It doesn't happen all the time, um, but it's fine. It just means the plane's slowing down and that uh, hopefully you're not far off from the runway. It's just going to fall, hopefully with a flare, uh, and you're gonna have a smooth landing. So that is the first video for our pre-solo exam. Uh, everything in relation to system 152. The first question just dealt with V-speeds. So, uh, study up on your V-speeds. Hey YouTubers, just to remind you, uh, we'd love it if you subscribe to Eric Flight below. And also, check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support me directly. Uh, anything would help uh, to basically further our adventure uh, in flight and flight simulation. And I appreciate just watching uh, my videos. So thank you very much, and I'll see you in the future.